here, breathing, heart beating and everything. The kids are excited this morning. They're going to be sharing in just a little while. Uh, we're thankful they had a, a safe week and a successful week. If you've ever went on a youth camp trip with youth as a chaperone, contrary to popular opinion, it is not a vacation. That's one of the biggest responsibilities you can have when you are the caregiver for other people's children. And uh, we're glad they got there safely. They had a good week at camp, and they were able to come back safely yesterday. So we're going to listen to them. I'm excited to hear from each one of these kids their testimony of what God did in their life this week at camp. Uh, and so we're going to get that opportunity in just a little while. But first of all, we want to welcome everyone who has joined us through Facebook and through YouTube, and we welcome those who have come into the sanctuary of Clover Baptist Church. I'm aware that we have a lot of people that are on vacation this morning. Uh, that season has truly begun, and so we miss them while they're away, but we're looking forward to their return when they get back off of vacation. So uh, we do extend our welcome to everyone who has joined with us this morning. A few things in the bulletin that I need to share with you to make sure that you're aware of. Uh, we do have an upcoming deacon election. This is mandated by our church constitution. The first ballot will be held on Sunday, July the 17th, and all the information is there. There are four vacancies that we need to consider as we pray about who God would have to serve in the role of an active deacon for Clover Baptist Church. And then you see the VBS reminder also. I've already mentioned that. Uh, we're going to be wrapping up our Caldwell Pregnancy Care Center uh, baby bottle drive. And if you need a baby bottle, talk to Mary Sudreth. We've had several baby bottles already returned uh, full of coins. And the goal is from Mother's Day to Father's Day to be able to collect these funds so that they can be used right here in Caldwell County with young women who are expecting and uh, to minister to them and their need as well. So remember that. Uh, next Sunday morning is, do you know what next Sunday morning is? It's Father's Day, and we'll be honoring and recognizing all of our fathers during the worship service next Sunday morning. So if your dad is alive, I hope that you will spend some time with him. If he's so far that you can't see him uh, physically, I hope you'll make a uh, phone call or a uh, live screen where you can talk with each other. If they're able to come to church, come with them to church. But let's don't forget our dads on Father's Day as well. Uh, Vision and Finance Committee meeting this afternoon at 5 o'clock. And I'm not sure, are we having a nominating committee meeting this afternoon? We are not, but there will be one coming up very shortly. So be praying. There's a lot of preparation that has to be made as we're preparing to go into a brand new church year, the first day of September. So please be bathing that in prayer, if you would, as well. And then we come to our prayer time this morning. We've got a lot of concerns that we want to be faithful to remember as we pray. In Sunday school this morning, Robert Hedrick asked that we pray for his grandmother and his grandfather. They're in their 90s, and she has leukemia, and his grandfather's trying to be a caregiver for his grandmother. And you realize when you get to that point in life, a lot of family is helping out, but that is a, a big responsibility and can be very taxing. So remember to pray for Robert Hedrick's grandparents, if you would. Uh, Jeannie Schrantz learned this week that she has cancer. She had cancer 20 years ago. It was lymphoma cancer. Now she has an invasive carcinoma. And she was scheduled next week to see a doctor about that to plan a form of treatment. But unfortunately, Friday afternoon, she came down with COVID. And uh, many times when you have COVID, they wait at least three months before they proceed with any kind of uh, invasive procedure. So pray for Miss Jeannie, if you would. And also remember Robert Ward. Uh, Robert has got three places on his foot that are very serious. Uh, he had hoped to get a wound vac put in place this week, but you know how bureaucracy and insurance and doctors and all that is. He's probably going to be admitted to the hospital maybe tomorrow so that they can expedite getting the treatment that he is in need of. So please remember to pray for Robert and Debbie Ward, if you would. Uh, continue to remember Nolan Carson. He's improving. We're thankful for that. Uh, Rick Mackey, I talked with him this week. He has COVID. And also remember to pray for Buddy Carson. Uh, so we're not through this mess yet, but we're going to keep praying for God to help us get through this mess. So remember that if you would. And Ava, we're so glad that you're feeling better today, but Ava had to come home from camp early because of her health. And so we want to pray for her. She's got some follow-up appointments and you know, I believe God's going to heal this young girl, don't you? And we just need to pray to that end. And Ava, we love and appreciate you. 
So uh, you're in our prayers faithfully as well. Um, Faye Broom has been readmitted to the hospital. Uh, she has a urinary tract infection and probably get to go home either today or tomorrow, but do remember Faye. And also on Friday, uh, she learned that her twin sister is in hospice and they're giving her two to three days to live. And I understand that twins many times are feeling what the other twin is experiencing. So it's strange that both of them are needing care right now, but do remember to pray for her if you would. I have unspoken requests that I would appreciate your faithfully praying for and got a good praise report. Uh, Scott, this is uh, Marion Beam's brother who's in California who is struggling with cancer, uh, was unable to come home the way that they normally would have brought somebody home. But there is kind of an angel ministry that's going to fly him in. Hopefully he'll be here by Wednesday. So it'll be great that he can be with his family. So remember to pray for Scott and pray for the safe trip for him as well. Unspoken requests, maybe you have some you'd like to share with an upraised hand. And Aren't you glad we have a God who knows everything and he's able to meet every need? So we're going to give you an opportunity if you'd like to come and find a place to kneel. Uh, there's plenty of room at this altar if you're a guest. Don't feel like a guest. Feel like you belong because we want you to have that feeling this morning. And you can pray right where you are. But the important thing is that we are a people that believe and practice prayer because we have a God that's able to answer prayer. Let's bow together. Our Father, we just want to thank you that you are God. You know everything that is taking place around us. And Father, you have the solution. You met our greatest need when you allowed your only son, Jesus, to come to an old rugged cross. Give his life that we might have the forgiveness of sin. Have a companion to walk with us through this life. And then a home that's guaranteed for us in heaven. I ask, Lord, if there's one that's listening that is not saved, that today would be the day when they would open their heart and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Father, if there's somebody that's estranged from you, I pray today would be the day when they would come back into fellowship with you and with your people. Lord, there are burdens that many of us are carrying. And we're thankful that you've offered to be our burden bearer. God, I pray, Lord, that we would simply leave it in your hands and trust you to do what we don't have the power to do. I pray for healing, grace to be given to those that are sick. Pray for family members and caregivers that you would comfort and bless their heart. Thank you especially this morning for the memory of Miss Alma Bowman. She was with us last Sunday morning, but now she's in your direct presence in heaven. I pray for her family that as they make the adjustments that, Lord, you'll comfort them, you'll wrap your loving arms about them and hold them near to you during these days. Pray for our government of this land. Lord, we ask for salvation for those who are leading us. Lord, I pray you direct their paths that they would lead us in a way that you could bless this country. I pray for our missionaries sharing the gospel. Give them souls for their labor, put a hedge of protection about them. For our military, God, we ask, Lord, that you would just take care of every person that is serving this land in uniform. Be with their families. Forgive us where we fall short and use this time to draw us near to you. In Jesus' name, amen. As you make your way back, if you see somebody you haven't had a chance to speak to, be sure to let them know you're glad they're here this morning. Lacey just shared, I talked with Jennifer at the funeral the other day, and she did not get a good report this week. They are depending on the blood, the counts to stay at a certain level in order for her to continue to receive the treatment she's uh, receiving. So please continue to pray for Jeff and Jennifer and call upon the Lord on their behalf as well. Well, I want to ask you to stand, and we're going to be singing a song that is unto him this morning. It's called Bless His Holy Name, page number 22 in your hymn book. It's going to be on the screen as well. So you sing to the Lord this morning.
remember it is more blessed to give than to receive and he's only asked for a tenth he could have asked for 90 percent but he's satisfied with only a tenth morning for letting us come back here to your house to worship God. Thank you for our people for the uh, wonderful wisdom for the things we did last week. God, thank you for the life that was up, the seed that was sown. Lord, for the work that was done this week amongst our young people. God, we just pray for them. Lord, we pray that you will be done in their lives. Lord, give us this morning as we prepare to, to uh, share what you brought going on this week, God. Let your tongue be heard and give us guidance. And Lord, we ask you now to bless your time. see some folks up in the balcony that I haven't had a chance to speak to this morning. It's good to have you guys visiting with us today as well. Y'all are a little closer to heaven than we are, uh, but it's probably a little hotter up there than down here where we are right now. But we welcome you this morning. Let me ask you to turn to 1 Kings in the Old Testament, chapter number 19. We'll be looking at two verses, verse number 11 and verse number 12. 1 Kings chapter number 19, verse 11 and verse number 12. And he said, Go forth, and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountains and brake in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire a still, small voice. Let me remind you, of the setting for these verses that we have just read. In chapter number 16 of 1 Kings, in verse number 30, we are told that King Ahab was ruling over the nation of Israel, and it says that he did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. So I don't have to underscore the fact that King Ahab was a very wicked, evil, ungodly king. King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, his wife, were idol worshipers. They worshiped the false god Baal. And God sent a prophet by the name of Elijah to come and confront them with their sin and carry a message that there was going to be a drought. That drought was going to last longer than three years. And this was coming upon the land because of the sin of the people. Now, King Ahab and Queen Elizabeth were filled with hatred toward Elijah. And they sought to have him killed. Have you ever somebody say, well, please don't shoot the messenger? That's exactly what was happening here. Elijah was pr proclaiming and preaching the message that God gave him to preach, but they didn't like it. And so because they didn't like it, they decided they would get rid of the messenger, which was the prophet Elijah. And many of us have likely found ourselves asking God, God, would you just speak to me and show me what you want me to do? Have you ever been in the throw of a decision and you didn't know whether to go to the right or you didn't know how to go to the left? And you probably said, Lord, I just wish you would speak to me and tell me what I need to do. Or maybe you said, Lord, would you just write it on the wall so that I can see it clearly, so that I can know beyond a shadow of a doubt what you would have me to do. God doesn't always speak to us in the way we want him to speak to us. He doesn't always speak through a strong wind. 
He doesn't always speak through an earthquake. He doesn't always speak through a fire. But in this verse that we just read, God spoke to the prophet Elijah through a still, small voice. In life, there are a lot of voices. And young people, I'm glad you're here at the very front. In life, you will find a lot of voices trying to tell you what to do, where to go, how to live. They'll be shouting at you at times. They may even be screaming at you at times. But what I want to challenge you to do this morning is seek to listen to that still, small voice of God. If you'll listen to his voice, he will never lead you astray. He will always help you face whatever it is in life that you must face. But I challenge you this morning, listen to the still, small voice of God. Try to get all the rest of them out of your head, out of your mind, because he is the one that you can trust. Right now, we're going to share a short video before the youth come, and I have watched this I don't know how many times. I watched it again this morning a couple of times. I'm so thankful that somebody shared this with me. It's a true testimony. Wait till I get the lights out before you turn it on. But this is a true testimony. And when I was preparing for my message, I thought, Lord, you just brought all this together. Isn't that the way God does? Doesn't he bring things together? The devil tears things apart, but God brings things together. You're going to listen to this, and if you're not blessed by it, I'll give your money back. All right? Pay attention. Listen to the still, small voice. I was in Alaska doing a lawsuit. We're way out in the Aleutian Islands, getting ready to leave and go back to Anchorage and then home. And I had a ticket in my pocket to get on an airplane. The pastor came up, and he said, listen, I can save you money. I said, how's that? He said, I flew a small airplane up here, and I fly a small airplane, and I can take you in my little airplane, and you can save your ticket. And this did not sound, I said, gee, thank you so very, very much, but I've got this ticket. We'll just make our way on home, me and this other lawyer with me. He said, no, 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 you got to do it, you got to do it. And against every better judgment I had, I said, okay. Well, we went out to the airport, took us by his little plane, and I looked at it. And I thought, well, one good thing, it's shiny. Then he walked around it. We got in. He's on the left front. I'm on the right front. The other lawyer's sitting right behind me. And he started it up. And it started up just fine. Well, we taxied out. I said, should we pray? He said, yeah, that's a good idea. We normally don't. I said, well, this time we're going <laughs> to. And I'm telling you, I prayed five, eight minutes. I prayed a long time. We went and got on the runway. He starts down the runway. The plane lifted off ever so gently, and we start climbing. And it's wonderful. Not a problem in the world. We started climbing, and we flew probably three, four minutes. And something happened that will never leave my mind. The pilot turned to me, and he said, we're going in the clouds, and I can't fly in clouds. They make me pass out. I said, clouds make you do what? Now, it's been cloudy all day. And we go right up into the clouds, and you can't see anything. And he looks at me, and his eyes roll back in his head. And he starts mumbling, and he passes out. Passed out cold. Now, I grabbed him, and I shook him, and I said, come on, you got to wake up so I can kill you. Now, we're in the clouds, flying along with no pilot. And my friend in the back seat said, we're dead, aren't we? I said, there's a very good chance of that, yes. He said, what are we going to do? I said, I don't know. But there was a radio right there, and I handed him the microphone, and I said, start asking for help. So he's in the back seat reaching up, and he said, hello, hello. We didn't know any proper radio etiquette. All we were saying was hello. And somebody answered back, hello, hello. Don't you guys know proper radio etiquette? And I said, give it to me. I said, tell we don't know nothing. Tell him we're in an airplane with a passed out pilot and we don't know how to fly this plane. The guy said, I'm a freighter flying out of Anchorage on the way to Tokyo. And he said, you're telling me you have nobody who can fly that plane with you? I said, tell him that's correct. Now you gotta understand, I am sweating bullets. He said, the first thing I'm gonna do is start circling so I don't lose you because I'll fly out of range of your radio and you won't have me anymore. And he said, I'm gonna get Anchorage emergency for you. An Anchorage emergency will be the people that can maybe help you try to save your life. After about five minutes, Anchorage came on, said, we understand you have a passed out pilot, and those of you do not know how to fly that plane. We said, that's right. 
They said, well, the first thing we got to do is find you. And I'll never forget what this man at Anchorage said. He said, my job is to get you home safe. He said, that's my job. But he said, here's the deal. If you want me to get you home safe, you got to promise me you'll obey my voice. He said, you can't see me, but I can see you. And he said, if you're not going to obey my voice, you're going to die. When you can't see anything, you have no idea how disorientated you become. Finally, he said, okay, I found you. Now hear me clear. He said, you're four minutes from a mountain. He said, you're going to crash in that mountain and die. Follow my voice. I never said, I have to follow your voice. Is that reasonable? You see, I understood without his voice, I had nothing. And do you understand? Without God's voice, you have nothing. Nothing. Finally, he got us turned. And he said, I'm freezing all the traffic in the area. He said, it's going to take me an hour and a half to get you to Anchorage. And there's a lot of weather between you and Anchorage. You're in for a rough ride. And he said, I want you to hear me. I don't want you to look at what's going on outside. I don't want you to pay attention to the storm, just my voice. He said, if you start watching the storm, you will die. But I'll take you through it. Now, because they cleared all the traffic, several pilots, those nighttime freighters, those 747s, started talking to us. They said, we're praying for you, men. You're going to make it. But listen to the voice that's the key they said trust the voice do you realize your head is full of voices and everybody in this world wants to talk to you and everybody wants to be the controlling voice and God says I want you to be a living sacrifice I want you to put yourself on the altar and let my voice be your voice finally we went through the worst of the weather but there was still more and then the voice came back and it said now I'm going to line you up. He said, I'm going to bring you in right down the runway. And at the foot of the runway are some lights, and they're in the form of a cross. He said, don't you forget this. The cross is the way home. Finally, he's bringing us down. We still can't see anything. And all he kept saying is, stay with me. My sheep, the Bible says, hear my voice, and they follow me. Finally, just a couple hundred feet off the ground, we saw the cross. I landed the plane. In fact, I landed it seven times. <laughs> Finally, it all came to a stop, and the minute we stopped, the pilot woke up. The voice said, thanks for listening. I watch them crash and burn all the time because they won't follow my voice. They don't understand I'm the one who can see them even when they can't see me but they get the voices in their head and they kill themselves. They self-destruct. Thanks for listening to the voice. Then they put us in a motel room in about four in the morning to knock at my door. And I opened the door and a man was standing there. He said, hello, David. I said, you're the voice. You're the one who got me home. He said, I am. Do you understand one day you're going to stand before him and say, you were the voice. You're the voice that brought me home. If you're not on that altar as a living sacrifice, your head's full of voices. And then we wonder why kids crash and burn. We wonder why marriages are shattered. And the Lord's saying, I'm the one who has the voice. All I can remember is that voice saying, stay with me. Amen. Stay with me. Don't listen to what's going on in your head and don't watch the storm. Stay with me. Amen. And I'll take you through. Tonight you have a God who has promised to take you through. Amen. A living sacrifice, holy. Folks, we're all on a plane that is getting ready to crash and burn unless we listen to the right voice. And that voice is Jesus Christ. You're listening to a voice. 
My question is, whose voice are you listening to? We're not going to wait till the kids get through to share an invitation. I believe there are people that need to find a place to do business with God right now. I'm going to find myself a place right there. You may need to do the same thing. What did he say? Romans, present yourself a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Lord. And right now, I believe this church needs to listen to his voice. As we stand, no music. We'll give you an opportunity to come, and then the youth are going to share.
Nick, I'm going to let you and Lacey take charge. And when you're finished, you can just say the dismissal prayer. Thank y'all for coming. I hope that video spoke to your heart like it spoke to mine. Uh, it continues to speak to mine. I want to listen to the voice.
I want solar panels on my home, but they're too expensive. I get this comment all the time. And the good news... Excuse me for a minute But I have got a song to sing It might not be on key, but it's from my heart no one else can tell it What the Lord has done for me well, This might take all day So I better start right now And it might get loud It might get loud Heaven's coming down, down Our theme verse for this week was Acts 20:24, 20, and it says this, However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given to me, the task of testify, testifying to the good news of God's grace. To make a way for me in heaven You sent your son to die for my salvation You call me royalty and family A child of the king Oh, you don't regret the way that you love me Jesus, you paid it all to redeem me Out of the dark and into your glory now nothing can stand between my heart and eternity You give us your victory It's worth it, it's worth it By grace I have been redeemed Your blood paid the penalty I stand here alive and free It's worth it, the cross was worth it Give a love that's endless I can't contain the joy that's in your presence Oh, how I want to live like this forever In your royalty and family A child of the King Oh, you don't regret the way that you love me Jesus, you paid it all to redeem me Out of the dark and into your glory Oh, nothing can stand between my heart and eternity You give us your victory It's worth it, it's worth it By grace I have been redeemed Your blood paid the penalty I stand here alive and free It's worth it, the cross was worth it I'm alive to praise the King, the God who gave it all for me. You are the reason I can breathe. You're worthy, you're worthy. Now I'm alive to praise the King, the God who gave it all for me. You are the reason I can breathe. You're worthy, oh. Nothing can stand between my heart and eternity. You give us your victory. It's worth it. It's worth it, by grace I have been redeemed Your blood paid the penalty Now stand here alive and free It's worth it, it's worth it Nothing can stand between my heart and eternity You give us your victory It's worth it, it's worth it By grace I have been redeemed Your blood paid the penalty I 
I stand here alive and free, it's worth it, the cross was worth it. Have y'all heard of Castle? It's so much fun. Yeah, I had so much fun last week. The worship was amazing. The Boodoo Tail Band was so awesome, and I love singing and praising God with them. Yeah, I learned so much. Are you talking about the basketball player? No, Grayson. It's Shaq Hardy. He was our student pastor last week. He's from the Biltmore Church. His theme last week was worth it. What she means is Shaq asks us if we are worth it. Is Jesus worth it? Is Christianity worth it? And is the church worth it? After worship time with Shaq in the morning, we went into small group time. And let me tell you, I feel like we all got closer to God by being in God's Word and learning more about why Jesus is worth it. I could be catching a lot of fish in that time. But doesn't it sound like and each night after evening worship, we would have church group devotion. And our prayer partners, Andrew and Abby, would come and pray for us. During devotion, God really spoke to my heart. Then during free time, we would play cornhole, volleyball, swim at the pool, or go to the beach. We all got pretty close in our free time. See, Castle has a lot to offer for your relationship with Jesus, along with giving you time to hang out with other Christians. So, you gonna go us this next year, Grayson? Yeah. Cool place, but I'm gonna have fish. Thank you, stuff. Feel free to join in and praise with us. Stand up, please. Ah uh... 
Sorry, just give it a second. <laughs> Okay, we're going to again. Okay. Is Jesus worth it? Is living your life for him worth it? Is possibly suffering persecution for his name worth it? I was a criminal. Guilty in every word. I was brought before a crowd where my fate was to be laid in their hands. Another man was also brought before the crowd. He was unknown to me, but all I knew is he was blameless. After everything I had done, I knew I deserved to die. As I hung my head in shame, I waited for my condemnation. But Jesus, the Son of God, was crucified instead of me. He took my place upon that tree. Where I should have suffered all the wrath of God. Jesus took the guilty verdict on that, on that so I can be saved. This story should sound familiar. It's all of our stories. We all deserve to die for our sins, but Jesus was blameless and took the penalty we deserved. Jesus loves us so much that he laid down his life so we could have a personal relationship with him. That is a love we will live for. So, is Jesus worth it? Yes, yes Jesus, Jesus is, is worth it. it. So on Tuesday, we were given the task of finding a seashell that represents us. Then on Wednesday, we marked the shell to represent our sin. That evening, after being moved by the Spirit at Fort Worship, we went and threw these sin shells off of the pier, saying, Nothing can separate us from the love of God. It was like throwing away all the weight sin tries to hold us down with. After that, we sang a song. Use that? Oh, never mind. Okay. okay, so I would first like to thank our church for giving us the opportunity to go to Caswell this week. Um, Caswell has always had a special place in my heart and has helped grow me into the Christian I am today. Um, our theme, Worth It, during camp really helped me to better understand the worth behind being a Christian and a part of the church. Um, a quote that really spoke to me this past week was, The Christian life isn't just about doing, it's about becoming. I believe this is true because we as followers, followers of Christ can do as much as we want helping, volunteering, and trying to make ourselves seem as if we are part of the church and trying to be seen. To me, that is not what being a Christian means. My value comes from what Jesus did, not what I've done. 
This past week has opened my eyes on how to be more Christ-like and treat others with kindness, Jesus did. There are many examples this week of how we as Christians are not supposed to act and treat others. I really felt God this week working in mine and my youth group's heart, and I hope that we were able to keep the mindset that we had throughout, we had at camp throughout the rest of our lives. Yes. Um, heard about Chasm. This is my first time going, and uh, it was one of the best, uh, I'd say, um, it spoke to a lot of people, definitely spoke to me most. Uh, I feel like uh, that God was really working down there, and uh, you could feel the energy flowing throughout the match. Um, it was a very good time down there. But I, uh, I was almost my train to fall. Uh, I got closer to God while I was down there. Uh, and uh, he was he really talked to me and um, he was speaking to me about uh, going and sharing the gospel and I feel like uh, that he was calling me uh, sharing the gospel and at Casual, we became closer with friends and the b tell staff and our student pastor, Shaq Hardy. We played games and worship. We saw a bunch of people get called to follow Christ, and a bunch of people were interested in teaching the gospel. Overall, it was a great week. During Caswell, I felt like I got closer to God. And Caswell has always been an amazing place to go for a church camp. There were so many activities to do, and we all and I got closer with my youth. Last, re, last, <laughs> stop last week really spoke to me about Jesus being worth it. I also loved the singing with everyone at camp. Friday night was probably one of the best nights of the entire camp. With everyone singing and jumping and just praising Jesus. Everything Shaq said has stuck with me. And thank y'all for letting us go to Casual this year. This was my first time ever going to Casual. I won't lie, I put it off going for many years because I didn't know if I truly wanted to go. A while back, I watched a documentary about adoption and the many kids that don't have a family. It really spoke to me because if it wasn't for my Nana and Papa, me and my sister, with both being the foster system. I started thinking about one day not having children of my own so I could foster and adopt children who really needed a home. However, I recently started having doubts due to the system being so rigged and not knowing if I could handle the emotional roller coaster that came with it. However, during worship, Shaq really spoke to my heart when he mentioned he was a foster kid. This made me feel a special connection with him since we shared a similar story and God helped us through the, those hard times we felt like no one loved us or wanted us. During this trip, God really spoke to me, and I am now committed to one day being a foster parent, no matter the challenges I may face. I got a microphone. <laughs> I got a microphone. Oh, gosh. Okay. During CAS last week, God really spoke to my heart. Shaq was so awesome at explaining the Bible. What he said that really spoke to my heart was, my sin is always somebody else's scar. Last week was so amazing, especially since we got to rejoice in the gospel every morning and night. And I hope you all all know how much Jesus is worth it. And in the end, Jesus wins. My favorite part about Casual was um, going to Hatch every day and singing along to worship songs. Apparently, I have to go now. Um, so I I enjoyed Caswell. This is my second time going. Um, really spoke to me again this year, and I felt a little bit of a rekindling within um, being called into worship, um, as I did last year. And it really opened my eyes again into seeing what God can really do to people. Um, last week, it was just 
you could you could see it you you could feel it and it was all around you like it was crazy honestly and it really opened my eyes like i said to seeing what he can do to people and um it's just i want to thank the church for letting us go cuz there's a lot of people that um don't really know what happens there but if it wasn't for y'all we would not feel these things or see these things happening just outside of our church family or our you know state or not state but county um but i just really appreciate y'all putting in the um donations and everything else for letting us go um means a lot to i think all of us so This week at Caswell, I enjoyed hatching our um, preacher shack. I also had fun finding crabs and shells on the beach during f free time. I also liked spending time with the youth. <laughs> Thanks. During Caswell, the thing that spoke to me was when Shaq said that only Jesus saves. If Jesus can't change you, the gospel can't save you. This stuck out to me because you really can't do anything without Jesus. Amen. So, during Caswell this year, I really had fun. Um, uh, Shaq, our preacher, he really spoke to me this week. Um, uh, at the four worship at, uh, on Wednesday, he was talking about how uh, sins hurt people and you know give give them scars and uh, I, that really spoke to me. I didn't realize that. Um, uh, probably one of my favorite things was the free time, um, play cornhole with the guys and getting to know everybody. Thanks for letting us go this time. Thank. You. My favorite part about Caswell was probably the amount of music that they had, because I connect with people through music. So hearing all of those Christian songs really helped me connect to Jesus. And it changed my mindset, the way that I think, and the way that I see other things and people. Caswell really is an incredible experience, and thank you all so much for letting us go. Um, I know we all appreciate it so much. Um, my favorite part of Caswell was probably when we, were, we would be in worship and the band would kind of stop playing and just let our voices sing and praise the Lord. That was just a very, very powerful moment for me, just to hear all of us singing and praising the Lord. So thank you so much for letting us go. I made a couple notes so that I wouldn't overlook anything that I wanted to say. I love these kids. If you ever spend any time with them, you'll see how amazing they are. Sometimes it doesn't look like there's many of us because we're dispersed when we come in here. But if you come up to the second floor on Sunday mornings, we're there. Wednesday nights, we're there. All of these kids are super dedicated to our church. So I appreciate that. Because teenagers can be a lot of other places on Sunday morning and Wednesday nights or any other time that we have something planned here at our church. 
I wanted to thank um, Mark. He's up there. You have to turn around and wave to him. He drove us in our bus this year. Super nice. Thank you so much, Mark, for taking us, driving us in our bus. We felt like, I don't know, very relaxed and comfortable, had a ton of space, and we really appreciate him doing that for us. Also, Kim, she cooked for us, her and Mark, while we were down there. So thank you, Kim, for feeding us. Um, and then Becky came with us, and she helped chaperone this week. Thank you, Becky. And then my husband, Nick, was also there helping us um, this week as a chaperone, and they led and helped us lead in our devotion time at night. So I appreciate them so much for taking the time to go because, as the pastor said before, it's not a vacation. Um, it is definitely a time where you're... Um, I don't want to use the word busy, but we were like just doing things constantly all throughout the, the day. It was a very spirit-filled time where we were in worship in morning and night, in Bible study in morning, devotion at night, and then they were allowed free time to fellowship with each other. My favorite thing about that time that we have each year during that week is seeing these kids grow together and seeing them be in God's Word, truly understanding. These kids know a lot about what God's Word says, and they understand it. And to me, that is one of the most important things coming away from this, is that they truly know God's truth, walking in it each day, so that when they go out of this church, that they can be the church outside of this church, Amen. wherever they are. I wanted to also thank our church, as the youth have said before. We appreciate your support. And I wanted to leave you with something. On my other page. It says, what you put your faith in is proved by your actions. So what do your actions say you believe? You become what you behold. And we learned a lot about that this week. What we're putting our faith in, what we so truly say that we trust in. And I hope that each one of these kids, not just the next week that they have, but throughout the rest of their life, that they hold on to these um, moments that they've had with each other, the, the gospel that they have learned, the truth that they have, and walk in it each day. So before I sing, I just wanted to say that we wanted to sing this song as an invitation for you because it's the one we sang on the pier. So feel free to sing along, pray, or just take a moment to praise God.
this morning was planned by our youth. Um, the skits, they wrote those themselves. Um, the songs, they picked out those songs that they wanted to sing. Um, the testimonies that they gave at the end were what they wanted to say from what they felt. So let's give them a hand. I just wanted to say something um, really quickly. This I haven't been to Caswell as a, um, a, a chaperone in over 16 years because Lacey was pregnant with Aiden the last time I went. So this was really, really special. It was special because I got to spend time with my own son who is a youth and my niece Emmy and my nephew Ben um, and then Lainey got to go along with me. So I was just fully blessed. Um, and being able to be there with them and um, seeing how they reacted to Caswell because it is an experience um, and it's an experience within not only outwardly because you are um, consumed in Jesus all week um, and I think that that is one thing that I, you can see a change in them you saw a change in attitude you saw a change in um, I, I think just um, how they how they react to things you know I never once, I mean, maybe from my own kid, maybe a time or two, but um, I never saw any mumbling or grumbling or bad attitudes or anything like that all week. And I know that is not how it is at home. I know that. Um, I, I do. I know that. But I, I do. I feel like that it's an experience because that's something that, you know, they are consumed um, in the Word and they are consumed by Jesus all week. So I, that is my prayer that they take that. Um, and that they, you know, develop that prayer life and they develop that, that yearn and earn for, um, for reading God's word. So I've got a, one more thing um, that Shaq Cardi, uh, his points that he had on the first night, and this was my very um, favorite message that he gave. Um, Jesus was charged instead of me. Jesus took the guilty verdict instead of me. Jesus was condemned to die instead of me. So youth... Everybody, one, two, three. This is a, just off of what Lacey was saying earlier. These you guys have brought these kids to church on Sundays and Wednesdays, and it's just like she said. They 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 know a lot. They know a lot, and it's because of you know you as parents, us as parents, and guardians, and it's unbelievable. I mean, I don't see it, you know, <clears throat> it's like Lacey said, they're, they're upstairs, her and Chris, teaching them on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights, and they're sponges.
it's unreal how much these kids know and it's you know partly because of them obviously they're taking it in and using it and trusting in it but you know it's it's us as a church family um, providing experiences like this for them and uh, we had two this week that felt like they were called into a ministry of some kind I mean it's awesome but I can't go much further I'll start boohooing <laughs> but I love them and I love you guys and we're really thankful that um, we were able to go, and I'm really thankful that I got to go and and watch and listen. Uh, I think Friday night we were talking in our devotion time about, um, you know, the youth being the future of our church. And they are, but they're also the now. Yes. And they, you know, they have every opportunity to participate and, you know, they talked about wanting to do a youth Sunday, Sunday morning, or what, what was it, what's it called? Youth Sunday, where they go and teach classes. They, they wanted to do that. They brought it up. So I'm just really proud of them. They're all awesome. I love them all, and I love all of y'all. You can go ahead and dismiss us. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for... The opportunity that was given here this morning for these kids, and I thank you, God, for each one of them. And I just pray, Lord, that you would just pour out your blessings on them, Lord, that you would continue to be with them and guide them and give them the courage and strength they need. I thank you, God, for our church and for what they mean to us, for their um, mission-mindedness and youth-mindedness. And I just pray, God, that you would um, bless each one of them. I pray, God, as we leave from here, Lord, that you would just help us to be a, a light in a real, really dark world. Lord, that you would protect us as we go and be with us throughout the week. And I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.